Our lesson for today in this session is all about construction material and testing, chapter one. And this is actually our introduction or overview. The engineering structures are composed of materials. These materials are known as the engineering materials or building materials or materials of construction. It is necessary for the civil engineer to become conversant with the properties of such materials. The service conditions of buildings demand a wide range of materials and various properties such as water resistance, strength, durability, temperature resistance, appearance, permeability, and etc. are to be properly studied before the making final selection of any building material for a particular use. Classification of engineering material that factors which forms the basis of various systems of classifications of materials in material science and engineering are the following. First, we have the chemical composition of the material, followed by the mode of the occurrence of the material in the nature, the refining and the manufacturing process to which the material is subjected prior it acquires the required properties. And for the fourth one, the atomic and crystalline structure of material. And finally, the industrial and technical use of the material. Construction materials are used in civil engineering structure, such as the following. First, we have the bridges. Another example, we have the high-rise buildings, highways, railways, tunnels, dams, towers, and of course, harbor structures. Civil engineering materials are the following as examples. We have the timber, the cement, and the concrete. We have also the rebars or steel bars. To summarize them and include some additional examples that we can have, the wood, the cement and concrete, bitumen and bituminous materials, structural clay, masonry, reinforcing and structural steels. What is concrete? Concrete is definitely a construction material. Mixture of Portland cement, water aggregates, and in some cases, admixtures, or let us say chemical admixtures. The cement and water form a piece that hardens and bonds the aggregates together. Composition of concrete. We have the water, aggregates, chemical admixtures, cement. And of course, we also have the supplementary cementitious materials as composition of concrete. For the water, good water is actually essential for quality concrete. Should be good enough to drink, free of trust, organic matter and excessive chemicals and or minerals. The strength and other properties of concrete are highly dependent on the amount of water and the water cement ratio. Aggregates. Aggregates occupy 60 to 80% of the volume of concrete. Sand, gravel, and crust stone are the primary aggregates that we use. All aggregates must be essentially free of silt and or organic matter. For the chemical admixtures, Materials in the form of powder or fluids that are added to the concrete to give it certain characteristics not obtainable with plain concrete mixes. In normal use, admixture dosages are less than 5% by mass of cement and are added to the concrete at the time of batching or mixing. The most common types of admixtures are the following. First, we have the accelerators. Speed up the hydration or hardening of the concrete. 
typical use or material use are calcium chloride and sodium chloride. Acrylic retarders load the hydration of concrete and are used in large or typical pores. Typical retarder is table sugar or sucrose, C12, H22O11. Air and draining agents. The most commonly used admixtures for agricultural concrete produce microscopic air bubbles throughout the concrete. Another one, we have the water reducing admixtures. Increase the workability of plastic or fresh concrete, allowing it to be placed more easily with less consolidating effort. Irene's water reducing admixtures are a class of water reducing admixtures. Reinforcements. Strong in compression as the aggregate efficiently carries the compression load. Weak in tension as the cement holding the aggregate in place can crack allowing the structure to fail. Reinforced concrete solves this problem by adding either metal reinforcing bars, steel fibers, glass fiber, or plastic fiber to carry tensile loads. For the cement, crystalline compound of calcium silicates and other calcium compounds having hydraulic properties. Considered hydraulic because of their ability to set and harden under or with excess water through the hydration of the cement's chemical compounds or minerals. Uses. Main use is in the fabrication of concrete and mortars. Modern uses. Building for floors, beams, columns, roofing, piles, bricks, mortar, panels, and plaster. For the transport, roads, pathways, crossings, bridges, viaducts, tunnels, parking, and etc. Water, we have the pipes, drains, canals, dams, tanks, pools, etc. Civil, we have the piers, the docks, retaining walls, silos, warehousing, poles, pylons, fencing. For agricultural, we have the buildings, processing, housing, and irrigation. Hydraulic cements. First, we have the hydraulic lime, only used in specialized mortars made from calcinations of clay with limestones. Natural cements, misleadingly called Roman. It is made from argillaceous limestones or interbedded limestone and clay or shell with pure materials because they were found to be inferior to Portland moss plant switch. Portland cement is actually an artificial cement made by the mixing clinker with gypsum in a 95 to 5 ratio. Portland limestone cements large amount from 6% to 35% of round limestone have been added as a pillar to a Portland cement base. Blended cements, mix of Portland cement with one or more SCM, supplementary cementitious materials like pozzolanic additives. Pozzolan lime cements, original Roman cements, only a small quantity is manufactured in the US mix of pozzolans with lime. And for the other one, we also have the masonry cements. These are type of Portland cement where other materials have been added primarily to impart plasticity. Aluminous cements, limestones and bauxite are the main raw materials used for refractory applications such as cementing furnace bricks. And certain applications where rapid hardening is required, it is more expensive than a Portland. Let's now talk about Portland cement, most active component of concrete. It is actually the greatest unit cost in concrete. Its selection and proper use are important in obtaining most economically the balance of properties desired for any particular concrete mixture. 
The production process for Furlan cement first involves grinding limestone or chalk and alumina and silica from the shear or clay. Type 1 or 2 Portland cements are the most popular cements used by concrete producers. Type 1 cement is the general purpose cement and most common type. Unless an alternative is specified, type 1 is usually used. Type 2 cements releases less heat during hardening. It is more suitable for projects involving large masses of concrete, heavy retaining walls. Concrete testing. We have the compression testing of concrete cylinders. Sometimes we use the ultimate testing machine. And for the standards that we used to follow are the following. The meaning of ASTM, American Society for Testing and Materials. While PNS means Philippine National Standards. International Organization for Standardization or ISO. Japanese Industrial Standards, or we call it sometimes as JIS as acronym. Jutsas Institute for Normal Hiwi, DIN, or DIN, the German Institute for Standardization, similar to US ANSI. And that's all for today. Thank you very much and God bless us all.